What's going on everyone? Austin John Plays here and today I'm going to be going over Pokemon Home organizing all 3,000 plus Pokemon that you could possibly put in there and helpful documents for you to do so with. If you've been a long time viewer of my channels, you're probably familiar with the Google Sheets documents that I work on quite frequently. Well, there's one that I've been working on for actual years, and that's a full Pokemon Home Dex. Now, I've used this and I've shown this off a few times, but I finally have it ready to just like make it as like a, a shareable thing and it's going to be available for everyone in this video. Before you ask, we do not know when Pokemon Home is going to be updated for compatibility with Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. All that we know is, and I quote, support coming early 2023. What is early? Does that define as the first quarter or the first half or the first third or... I don't know. So sometime between now and June 30th, it's going to be updated. My bet is the end of April. But anyways, now I do want to say that there are documents out there and websites out there to help you achieve this. If you're watching this on YouTube, you have a Google account. This is made for Google Sheets. Download it, upload it to your own Google Drive. It is your document. You never have to rely on someone else's website to make sure that all your check marks are there and then you clear your cache and now it's all gone. You have the document. You can make copies of it. You can download it. You can print it out and make physical marks on it. Whatever you want to do, it's there for you. The only thing that is reliant on someone else is just all of these images, which are hosted on PokeJungle. Shout out to them for hosting these images. And it just makes the document a lot smaller of a file size. I have not been able to find any document like this. If you wanna share this on your social media, if you wanna make a TikTok about it, go for it. Just include the website that I'm gonna be showing in later in the video, as well as in the description down below. Shout out to PokeJungle, they are gonna be hosting the document as well as all updates to the document as well as all patches that need to be done quick updates it's been formatted in a very specific way there's going to be documentation for any small updates that need to be done it's going to be really really easy to do the first thing i want to say is setting off your journey to organize every pokemon you've ever encountered in pokemon home can be a little daunting therefore there are actually several different versions of the document within the document to make your life a little bit easier. There are four different versions, one called a living form dex, what I call a living form dex light, a living dex, and a final form dex. If you are just starting off, you only have one, maybe two, maybe three games of the Pokemon franchise, or only Nintendo Switch titles, something like that, you may want to consider starting off with what's called a final form dex. This is an overview of what it's going to be looking like. This first row is called the Master Index. If you decide to come in here and sort by specific things and now it's all messed up, you could just come here and sort by the Master Index. The Master Index is programmed across all of the different pages. It gets a lot more difficult than just this page because like Final Form Dex, you could just organize by dex number and then you're fine except for the times that you aren't like if a lowland radicate is before regular radicate this will organize it by its index number over here you're going to see page which refers to which page of boxes you're going to be using the actual box number the number within the box and then for easy organization row and slot this means that in the first row in the first six slots these are the pokemon that would be there in the second row in the six slots it's like that final form decks includes regional variants but that's pretty much the only thing out of the norm it does not include any form differences gender changes or anything else like that this only requires you to have one charizard that's it when you're coming through here and something is complete i recommend changing it from a one which its default value to zero that's going to let you know that hey it's good to go i already have it in place if you, say for example, have an Ivysaur in Pokemon Home and you just need to evolve it, it's up to you if you want to make it 0.5 or X or whatever else. I like to do X to let me know, hey, I have this Pokemon, I just need to evolve it in a certain game. And then also, I've included compatibility with Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. So if you're getting ready for the Pokemon to be transferred from Scarlet and Violet, I just put an SV 
and then it's going to turn purple and that's how you know that hey i have this pokemon scarlet and violet it's ready to be transferred over when pokemon home is active you're going to see down here the form name which is to let you know the regional variants there's a form id that's going to be a lot more complicated in different versions of the document and then also there's going to be the gender id that's active in other forms of the document and then you're also going to see down here swish bdsp pla and sv these refer to the regional Pokedex numbers that that Pokemon appears in that game. So if you are trying to transfer a Pokemon over and you don't know where you can breed it down or evolve it or something else, that's a quick glance to know exactly what it's gonna be. I didn't include Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee because that's the first 150 and that's pretty self-explanatory. I did include BDSP because it is the first four generations but not the Alolan variants, so it's just a little bit easier that way. And this last column is called the keyword. Keyword is to signify the Pokemon's species followed by form ID followed by gender ID. You're gonna see that a lot more in different documents later, but Raticate is one, and then Alolan Raticate is Raticate hyphen one. That way it pulls the correct image from the other page over here, which is just the sprite index. You're never gonna need this. Shout out to PokeJungle for hosting all of these images on their server for us. So good people over there. There is a similar tool to this available on Cerebi's website. I've been working on mine for a long time. The difference is mine's already updated for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, as you're gonna see the Paldean Combat Breed of Tauros over here. But then also at every new generation, I no longer continue the same box. I like to start on a fresh new box. So you're gonna see this big gray line here for generation separation. Once you have one of each Pokemon species, you could get more into to what's called a living dex. A living dex is not just having a Venusaur, but also having a Bulbasaur and an Ivysaur. Not just a Charizard, but a Charmander and a Charmeleon. And that continues all the way down. You're gonna have original Rattata followed by Alolan, original Raticate followed by Alolan, so on and so forth like that which now makes the first generation of Pokemon 184 Pokemon out of the original 151. You can start moving on to a living form dex if you want. If you want to stay here, you're perfectly fine doing that. It's totally cool. Living form dex is once we start to get to Pokemon who have different active forms or different distribution forms. For example, Cap Pikachu. There are eight different cat pikachus that are available original cap is hyphen one hoenn sinnoh unova kalos alola partner and world cap you notice that it goes from hyphen seven to hyphen nine that's because hyphen eight is actually the game's internal code for partner pikachu from let's go pikachu which i don't even know if you can put that in home but i know that it's an identifier for the games to know that that's your partner pikachu this also now extends to the paldean combat breed blaze breed and aqua breed available in pokemon scarlet and violet for tauros and that makes generation one 195 pokemon you're going to notice that this is much more useful when you get to pokemon like unknown who has 28 different forms, one for each of the English alphabet, and then exclamation mark, question mark. The four different forms of Deoxys, including attack, defense, and speed. Luckily, you could just transfer three of them into Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl, and then change their forms there. The different Burmies and Wormadams, the two different forms of Gastrodon, having six different Rodoms for its different forms. Dialga, Palkia, and Giratina, even though they do have their origin forms, those are not boxable Pokemon home forms. So because of that there's only one entry for them. Shaman has its normal and its sky form so you need two different shamans. You need all the different seasons of Deerling and Sawsbuck. You need two of the weather quartet Tornadus, Thunderous, Landorus, and Enamorous. Yes that means you need to play through Pokemon Legends Arceus two times to be able to have two of them for its incarnate and therian form. You need two different Keldeos so you need two different distribution events or play through Pokemon Sword and Shield's Crown Tundra DLC two times. This also includes all 20 Vivions, including the Pokeball only distribution event that was only available in Pokemon X and Y. All of the different colors of Flabebe, Floet, and Florgis. Now I do know that when Pokemon Home first came out, we did have Floet-5, which was 
AZ's Floet, which has never been officially distributed or anything else. However, there is a placeholder sprite and a placeholder entry inside of Pokemon Home. I have chosen to omit that from this document. This includes the Pokemon Go exclusive Furfuro, different trims that are only available when evolving Furfuro in different areas in the real world like the one that you have to go to France for, stuff like that. All of the different sizes of Pumpkaboo and Gorgeist. Actually, this one is pretty easy to do in Pokemon Sword and Shield. 50 and 10% Zygarde, which yes, means you need to actually play Ultra Sun and Moon and transfer Pokemon over using Pokemon Bank. Although that should be pretty obvious because you need of the different Oricorios, which yes, you can very easily do that in Scarlet and Violet, but also the different mini ores. Now you're also gonna notice in this document under SV, I wrote DLC. This talks about the Pokemon that have missing scrubbed data for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet as of the 1.2 update, which infers that these Pokemon are going to be available in either part one and or part two of the DLC. So just for future proofing, I decided to put DLC in there. I may include a, a, a quick patch at some point because for you to patch this is actually very simple. Under Hidden Sheets, if you were going to Scarlet and Violet, Inside of here is all of the Pokemon in their national dex numbers, and some of them are available in DLC, some are not. Yeah, see, that's that's all the Pokemon that are not available. I could just release this one individual page. You come here, copy, paste, you're good to go. Patch is done. This also includes Magearna, original Pokeball form, which is actually your reward for completing the living decks in Pokemon Home. This also includes the 1% Antique Sinistee and Poltegeist, because of that that I decided to give them the different sprites that are available in Pokemon Home that show off their little certificate of authenticity at the bottom, or sticker of authenticity. This also includes all 47 all creamy, so have fun doing that. This also includes both Urshifus and Cubfu, which now means you need to play through the Isle of Armor three times in order to complete that. Normal and Dada Zarud. And lastly, we come to Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Now, you're going to notice that these sprites are not the Pokemon Home sprites because those are not officially released. However, I'm going to be updating that server side. So eventually, one day while you're in here, these images are just going to be the Pokemon Home ones. And it takes no work on your part. Isn't that neat? Okay. We need to talk about this, the elephant in the room. For Mousehold, Family of Three and Family of Four, it has unique sprites, right? For Squawkabilly, all four of its colors have unique sprites, right? The Dunsparces, two segment and three segment form, do not have unique sprites. So I did, I did, Austin John did, what the Pokemon company is too afraid to do. That's right, I got you gamers. You're gonna notice, right down here, the Dunsparce and the Dunsparce. What is that? That's a third segment. Yes, it is. Austin made a third segment, the Dunsparce. Why couldn't they do it? I got you. And then lastly is the Living Form decks. Honestly, the, the only difference between the Living Form decks and the Living Form decks light is that this includes gender differences, including more obvious ones like Pikachu male has a pointier tail and female has a rounder tail. That's the reason you're gonna see hyphen F on some of these entries in here which also means that there's now six of the Rattata family, but also very subtle ones, like Venusaur, whose female, its seed is slightly more pronounced. This also includes the most subtle gender difference of any Pokemon ever released, which is Torchic female, which has one brown pixel on its butt. In fact, there's a Pokemon home sprite of its back just to show you that. Any gender differences that are visible only from the back, like Torchic, Quagsire, Bidoof, and one of them having more fluffy tail pieces, there's actually specific images for that. But because those aren't the ones that you see, I chose to not include those. It's just the front sprites. Now, if you were to do this and complete every single entry of every single Pokemon of all gender and form differences, you will have a total of 1,300 167 unique Pokemon entries inside of Pokemon Home. I have not yet completed this. I'm now replaying through Ultra Sun and Moon. I just got my mini ores and there's some other stuff I need, by the way. 
Those are the best games to do your breeding in since all of the first eight generations are available inside of it, or seven generations. And while you're playing Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, because this is a fresh box, you can just organize your boxes from here going down of all of the new Pokemon for you to transfer over. So I'll probably go ahead and name this chapter Scarlet and Violet Prep. That sounds good. Inside of here, you're going to see that I have done exactly that. I have put all of these Pokemon in their boxable order ready for when Pokemon Home comes, including the Dunsparce's two segment and three segment forms, all three Tatsugiris, both of my legendaries, the new Paradox legendaries, all of them in here, ready to drag and drop. That's how you can set it up, ready to go for when the games come out. Now, considering you can already get 400 Pokemon in this game pretty easily, if all you have is Scarlet and Violet, that's a, a good amount of your living decks. That's like two fifths of it. It's not bad. Between this and Sword and Shield, that's probably half, more than half, definitely more than half, probably two thirds, especially with getting all the, the fossils that are available in, in the overworld and also max raid dens. Yeah, easy peasy. I've also decided to use this opportunity to get all the Pokemon that I need for Pokemon Home inside of Scarlet and Violet. So when the time comes and it's updated, I could just come in here, transfer all these Pokemon over. I know exactly where they go by row and slot. Makes my life so much easier. If you adopt this, you're gonna love it. Now, I just wanted to show you my personal copy because I made a personal copy and now I'm working on it. I can come in here and I could choose to not highlight zero. So now I have every Pokemon who's not already in their exact perfect slot in their perfect form. So now I know from Gen 1, all I need is these three, which are already in Scarlet and Violet. I also went through an OT purge. I made sure that every single Pokemon that I had, I was the OT of. There are some Pokemon that I'm not able to be the OT of, and because of that, I chose to just make a little mark of, there it is, N-O-T. Uh, so these furfuros that require me to go to Egypt and some other places, I'm not booking a flight to Egypt yet, so because of that, I'm okay with one that I'm not the OT of. However, because it's not zero, it's still going to not add to my average. And you can see just the massive amount of Pokemon I have in Scarlet and Violet ready to be transferred over. So because of that, if I choose to not include Scarlet and Violet, I now have a list of all the Pokemon I need to obtain, which some of them are in Scarlet and Violet, like Breloom and Vigoroth over here. Some of them are not, like, Skitty. I know Skitty's on the Switch. Oh yeah, there it is, three. Number 300 in BDSP. Oh, I don't like playing BDSP. Oh, I have to play BDSP. That's the only place I could get it. Okay. I need to get both camera ups, male and female. Looking at this, it's just very easy to do. I need to finish the Isle of Armor in my second playthrough for a second Keldeo, so I could have its regular form and resolute form. Large Gorgast, weird random stuff that I need. But thanks to this document and this filtering system, I could come up with exactly what I need. Now, you're also gonna see that there's a separate filter tab here. This is my constantly deleting filter tab. So if I come in here and I'm like, okay, every Pokemon that I don't already have in Home in Scarlet and Violet, well, where can I get them? Uh, I could get them in BDSP, so I just copy and I paste that there. Or I would really prefer to have them in Scarlet and Violet. So let's grab all of them that I can in Scarlet and Violet and overwrite those BDSPs. And I'm just gonna put SV right there. And now if I resort by the index number, I can see very quick glance all the Pokemon that I can possibly get in Scarlet and Violet, or if I have to revert back to BDSP. Doing that, I can quickly go through and I'm like, all right, well, right now I just wanna see the Pokemon that, that I can get in Scarlet and Violet. How clean is that? That is my hit list of things to achieve while playing Scarlet and Violet. That's gonna go into that box of Pokemon to bring into Pokemon Home. Couldn't be easier. And then when I'm done with this weird little bit that I'm doing, I just make sure that I enable all the things and I delete all of it. That's the reason it, that's, that's the temporary tab. And then always sort by index. Don't sort by anything else, sort by index number and you will never go astray. And then also, in case you're curious, there are two forms of this document. 
There is the Austin John Home Living Decks, and then there is also the Austin John Home Shiny Living Decks. And you notice that this page looks exactly the same, except for it's saying Shiny version 1.0, but all of them are their Shiny sprites. That's the only difference that you're going to be seeing. Now, for me, I'm only doing a final form dex. For me to go ahead and do a living dex of every shiny Pokemon seems a little excessive, so I'm not doing it. Now, there are some Pokemon that you cannot obtain in their shiny form. For example, the Cat Pikachus are never ever going to be shiny. So because of that, they are not in this document even by the full living dex down here. I've also decided to include things like N.O.T for Pokemon like Shiny Articuno, Shiny Zapdos, and Shiny Moltres in my own personal document. I'm not saying that you need to be the super strict on being OT, that's completely up to you. However, for a little quality of life, there are some Pokemon that it is impossible by any means, including distribution events, including semi-legal hacking slash glitching through a game, like Victini can never, ever, ever be shiny any single way because of that its sprite is actually just a lock icon but that's the only entry of the pokemon and i wanted to make sure that it could possibly be there that also goes for our current pokemon scarlet and violet pokemon that are all shiny locked and when those pokemon become available to be shiny i'm going to be updating its server side and then it will appear in game for you or sorry it will appear in this google document for you pretty simple like Enamorous, you can't get a shiny, so they're locked right now. The Calyrex Riding Trio, Urshifu, Cubfu, all of those are shiny locked. In my own personal document, I actually just chose to write the word locked there. That way, while I'm shiny hunting, I get rid of my zeros, I get rid of my locked, I get rid of my Scarlet and Violet. And now I have all the shiny Pokemon that I still need to get. X for it needs to evolve, and then SVX means I need to evolve it, and it's in Scarlet and Violet. Distribution only, like this Jirachi over here, if I want to get rid of that. Distro only. And now I have the full list of Pokemon that I need to get personally, including Lugia. And I missed Raid Day yesterday in Pokemon Go, which kind of blows. Just saying. I chose to include Manaphy as you can get it shiny because you technically can because of how the eggs were coded from that game. The Ranger? I think it was Ranger. Coliseum bonus disc? One of those. You're able to get that egg and then trade it to someone else and then if the OT lined up it's shiny, something like that. That's not a, a quest I want to... I want to take on quite yet, so I'm not going to do that quest yet. But there you go. These documents are going to be available linked down below. It's actually going to be bringing you to the Poke Jungle website. On the Poke Jungle website, how to organize Pokemon Home for a living decks. This page is going to have the most recent versions of the document. I'm just going to be updating it with them. They're going to be having these documents and these links so that you can download them constantly and you'll be good to go. Any patches I'm going to be doing are also going to be available on this site. I'll be going to be tweeting it out on twitter.com slash Austin John plays. And I do want to keep in mind that this is formatted for Google Sheets. Guys, I hope this document is going to be super helpful for you to organize all 1300 of your Pokemon that you have or less. You don't have to start with the crazy one. You can start at a much smaller one. You are going to have to play the 3DS for this. You are going to have to go back to uh, black and white in order to actually complete this if it's something that you want to do. Or if, if we're being technical here, you have to go back to Pokemon Red and Blue. But that's a story for another day. Guys, thank you so much for being here. If you found this video helpful or in this document helpful, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button down below. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications. Until next time, Austin John out. Man, they see me shining like I got the charm. Stay strapped, got that jet ball in my palm. Felt from the sky, guess I'm the chosen one. And if you need to know how, check out Austin John. Champion flow, flow, yeah. I got that champion flow, flow.